Hello everyone, Joseph Gallegos here, Great for Green. Today we're at a install that we did for Connect Homes. This is a modular home, and with this modular home, we're actually putting in, we put in a gray water system. Um, here in the front yard is a special lawn grass. The, the gray water system is every three feet, starting from a foot, and then goes every three feet across. Now, whenever you have a new sod, you actually have to use top irrigation at the beginning to get the grass established, get it going. But then after probably about another month, then the subsurface will kick in. Until somebody moves into this facility, we'll actually be watering with a supplemental valve, which fills in the gray water area, goes into a distribution tank, and then it still flows out into the landscape as if they were on vacation. But it's a way to keep it irrigated until somebody moves into the house. It's a brand new house. It'll be coming up for sale soon. So this particular house is built by Connect Homes. It's a modular house. It's built in sections of 20 foot wide and 40 foot long in a factory. And then it's brought out to the, to the, to the site and then actually assembled. So we have a number of different projects with Connect Homes, but also a number of other modular homes. And you'll see that as, as we progress, where they're pre-plumbing these houses for gray water, which is a great idea. So this landscape right here is using drinkable water currently, and that's because nobody's living in the house. We're bringing in an aquifer pipe can utilize drinkable water and still save the considerable amount of water. In this case, because it's all subsurface, it's actually cut water consumption by 50% on your turf because you're when as, as compared to regular irrigation systems that's put in the water on the surface and it's evaporating or the wind's blowing and, and blowing it away, the aquifer pipe is all subsurface and feeding the roots. So there's no loss of evaporation. So with this particular landscape, if you're doing a new construction, you typically only can only use a certain amount of water. It's a small percentage of what would be required for this type of grass. But the code also allows you to utilize gray water. And when you utilize gray water, that restriction goes away, allowing you to bring back a full lush landscape you, that the water you need for that. But as long as it's 100% gray water, it can't be a half and half has to show that you're completely switching from drinkable water landscape to a 100% gray water landscape. And then you can use as much of that gray water as you need for that landscape. And just talk to your landscape architect about that or your landscape designer and they can actually do that calculation for you and get you back to this type of landscape where you're not using any drinking water because you're using gray water and have a lush landscape so this whole area right here on this parkway is still using the aquifer pipe buried about a foot down in the center in this case we're using regular drinkable water because the code requires any parkways not to use gray water which I hope to make that argument that we should change that. Um, so still, as we're using the aquifer pipe, you're only going to use 50% of the water consumption because the water is being delivered subsurfacely, not on the surface where it gets evaporated. So typically on an aquifer pipe, we're seeing about 50% water reduction across landscapes like this. There will be additional plant material that's planted in here between the trees. We just want to get the trees established and get everything going first. Okay, so here we are in the backyard. The backyard we have, it's a tall fescue grass. Um, it's basically the aquifer pipe is running three feet on center along in this backyard. And it's all irrigated right now with regular drinkable water until somebody moves in and then it'll go to gray water. So you're able to have the balance between the two. And that's important because a lot of people always ask, well, what happens if I go on vacation or if it's empty? So I just want to emphasize that every system that you design for gray water should always have a backup valve so that you can supplement it with potable water and when you go on vacation or there's not enough people in the house. So both of these planter beds actually have aquifer pipe inside of them. We got this one, we have this one over here. It's buried basically a foot underneath the surface and 
because they're planters and they're going to put root crops in them, these are all potable water. So, meaning drinkable water from the regular system. The, the key here is that we wanted to have a nice garden right outside the kitchen. And so, we place the pipes basically one foot below the surface. There's two of them lateral. Uh, and they'll feed both of the vegetable gardens. Now let's go around the side corner and we'll look at some part of the stuff. Okay, so this is the main tank for the showers that are up above. The water's gonna come pouring into here from the showers. There's a three-way valve, electronic valve, underneath the house. So if they ever need to switch it, they use a remote control and it switches it back to the sewer system. But right here is where we have the filter and the sump pump built into the system. And then the pump will pump it out to the different sections. Because the aquifer pipe is a non-pressurized system, it's still considered a simple system because as the water gets pushed out to the aquifer pipe sub-irrigation, it's just really dousing it. It's getting pushing water out there and then it's naturally seeping up. And it's not a, it's not a pressure where it's pushing water and spraying it. Right here underneath the hose is a separate system. And this is for the laundry. So all the water from the laundry comes pouring into here. And then from here, it gets distributed out along this walkway on both sides. So you got two different areas, mainly because you have water source coming from two different locations, the bathrooms and then the laundry area. So right here with this tank, we actually have the specifications on the website so it shows you how to build your own or you can buy it all pretty simple for us. But this right here is a main cover. And if you look down here, this is where basically the, the gray water flows into. It'll be captured on this filter, any sediment from the hairs and the lint. And then it'll be get pumped up through this into this pipe right here. And then this goes out to the different areas on the yard. There's actually a pump underneath this, and that's what this, this is a sump pump. We are able to take off these filters and see that there's a pump and that there's a little bit of sediment water from the sprinkler system. And don't forget, we have tutorials on the website showing you how to build these because we want to make sure that everybody's able to do this at their house. It's not a exclusivity and we, we make them for you if you need to but it's also we want to spread the word of being able to reuse water reuse gray water and create lush landscapes and we feel gray water is not only a way to conserve water but it's a way to cut urban heat island sequester carbon and pollutants out of the air by having lush landscapes we just need the water for it so why not use gray water So this one is for laundry. It still needs to have the filter put in, but you can see that this is the pipe that's gonna be coming from the laundry. And then these two pipes actually go out into the yard for the gray water system. One's lower than the other because there's gate valves that are electronic and they'll shut one off or the other one to allow it flow. It can also be gravity flow if you wanted to. But this is great for any type of housing development. It's a simple system, meaning that it's not really using any type of pumps or anything. It's all gravity flow. What's nice about it, it's in this industrial type of container. So you can easily step on this and not worry about it. falling through. It's out of the way. It's easy to clean the filters. We're showing this to a number of different housing projects as a solution for their gray water system and being able to offer to consumers at a reasonable price. You know, you don't want to have this gray water system that's too expensive. And so this allows people to start having a gray water system at a very low cost. The sprinkler system that right here, right here, one of them is actually the makeup valve for the irrigation. The other two of them are actually for the planters and then one is for the sprinkler system to get this grass established. But once it's established, then that'll turn off. So 
look at our website. We'll show you how to build this as well and all this instructions and how to, how to really think about the whole process when you're doing it. Click on the description below to find out where to buy the products. We also have links to instructions to how to build a great water system. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. We would also love to hear your questions and also share how you prevent climate change. Put those in the comment section as well.